Geopark. Uh, I've been involved with the Geopark now for, I suppose, about 10, 12 years, something like that. Um, and latterly, as the as the geologist, just trying to get rid of something off my screen, that's it. Um, so what I'd like to talk to you about today is mostly about the geology of the Geopark, because I suspect that that's probably what uh, most of you would like to, to hear a bit about. Some of you, I'm sure, have been uh, to this part of the world and seen the geology already. And hopefully those of you that haven't will make the journey and, and come and see, because we've got some, some wonderful geology and landscape for you to look at. Um, I'll also tell you a little bit about the uh, the setup of the geopark and some of the things that we're currently doing and maybe a few things that you can do to help as well. Um, uh, it's great to, to, to have support from the geological community uh, in general, and there are ways that you can help, even if you're a long, long way away from the northwest. So I've, I've got some uh, pictures to show you as well while, while I'm talking, so I'll have a go at sharing the screen. And you always get that moment of trepidation when you're not sure whether it will do it or not. And I think it has done it. Um, yeah, it's all good. Okay, I'll just make it a bit, bit bigger if I can. That's it. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Um, so you're all welcome uh, to the, the, the Northwest Highlands Geopark. This is one of our boundary stones as you enter the geopark. Uh, this is the one in the south, south which is just to the, uh, the north of Ullapool. I uh, just took a picture of, of the map from our leaflet just to give you some idea of the area that we cover. Uh, the red line um, the, that runs around uh, the coastline is the one which is the boundary of the geopark. Um, and as you can see, it, it runs along the north coast, down the east, and then crosses back to the coastline again, just north of Ullapool down at the bottom there. Huge area, 2,000 square kilometers, uh, and about 2,000 inhabitants, adult inhabitants. So only one adult inhabitant per square kilometer. Um, and they're mostly concentrated around the coastal fringe, um, which is partly resulting from uh, clearances in, in uh, previous times, of course. Okay, it's now not moving on, of course. <laughs> Quite sure why it's not moving on, I'll keep trying. Try again. Okay, um, geologically then, uh, the Geopark um, is, has, I suppose, four main uh, rock groups in total. Um, and starting at the oldest at the bottom, the pink one on there is the Louisian, the Louisian Nice. Um, that's the, the, you know, the really ancient basement rock, as I'm sure most of you are aware. Um, and it comes to the surface over quite a large area of the Geopark in total. Um, so that, that is, is the pink area, and it's to the west in what we call the fallen rocks. So the sort of the black lines that you can see with the triangles on there are thrust faults, which I'll come to in a minute. But the, the Louisian Nice is mostly to the west of those thrust faults. Uh -huh. It's not moving on again, I'm afraid. Let me just try again. No. Hope I don't have to do this each time. <laughs> um, okay, the, the succession here uh, from the bottom then, we've got our Louisian nice at the bottom there. Um, and you can see the succession going vertically upwards from there. The Torridonian on top of it, uh, the Cambrian rocks on top of that, which are called the Arvrek group and the Durness group. Um, and uh, so that, that's the sort of the main succession. I'll try going back again so you can see the map. Hopefully it'll go back. No, it's not going back. Uh, mm. 
don't know what its problem is. Anyway, uh, coming back to the map again, we'll hope it kind of picks up in a minute. Uh, coming back to the, the map again, then you can see the pink of the Louisian. Uh, on top of that then is the Torridonian I showed you. That's the sort of orange areas um, in the fallen rocks as well, out to the west. Um, and that sort of is, is islands of, of uh, sandstone, mostly conglomerates, mudstones, sitting on top of the Louisian. Um, and you can see some down to the south here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but there's some down here to the south, a slightly bigger area. Sylvan, for example, here, the mountain Sylvan is a complete island or Inselberg of Torridonian. And you can walk right around the bottom on the Louisian. Um, Cunyag here is mostly Torridonian. And then right up in the north here, there's some other areas of Torridonian as well. Uh, these are all terrestrial sediments, land sediments, uh, mostly uh, fluvial tile, so uh, river river sediments, basically. Then on top of that, we've got the Cambrian rocks. So the Cambrian rocks consist of these grey quartzites um, uh, and pipe rock. So they're, they're mostly quartz-rich sands. Um, the pipe rock is, is full of burrows, um, burrow systems. And then the light blues on here are the limestones. So it's called Durness limestone. There's a patch up here, um, up in near Durness, and there's some caught up in the thrust faultings further south down here. Um, so that's the Durness limestone. A few other um, rock types marked on there. There are some larger igneous intrusions down here, which are mostly cyanites, um, and the Moyne schists are out to the east here. And the structure basically is that these moines schists out to the east have been thrust on these uh, black lines with the triangles, the thrust faults, and pushed up and over the fallen rocks out to the west. So that they actually sit at the top of a succession, but they're not the youngest rocks of all. No, it's not moving on again. Oh, it's going back though. <laughs> Let's try now. Um, right, giving you a, an idea in three dimensions, then this is the mountain Cunyac um, in the north part of Ascent. Um, to get your eye in on, on it a little bit, um, the sea is out in the distance here. This blue is the sea. We're fairly high up and looking northwards. So the Louisian Nice is the pink down here with some dikes intruded into it. This green, these green rocks are dikes intruded in called the Scoury Dikes. Then the, the yellow and the khaki rocks here, the Torridonian rocks sitting on top of the Louisian. You can see a little bit as to how irregular that unconformity is there uh, running around the base. And that's because the Torridonian was deposited onto an eroded land surface. Up at the top of Cunyac here, we've got the Cambrian rocks, the basal quartzite and the pipe rock dipping away to the east. And you can see more Louisian nice in the distance. Louisian look like. Um, it's a hugely variable basement rock, um, basically light and dark banded. Uh, the dark bands are tend to be amphiboles, pyroxenes perhaps, the lighter bands quartz and feldspar. The banding's on all sorts of different scales. Uh, it can be quite sheared out uh, as here um, on the right. It can be quite tightly intricately folded as well as on the left of the outcrop. It can have quite large areas of of mafic nice in two, as we've got on the, on the side there. Um, there are some big dikes intruded into it. These are the scoury dikes here, uh, just where this person's standing. The left-hand wall of the dike is, is where my cursor is. The right-hand wall is over there. And we're looking along the length of the scoury dike. These are a sort of dolerite dikes, basically, pretty much unmetamorphosed uh, in ascent. Um, this is further north. This is a, a piece of the mafic gneiss uh, with some pegmatite veins intruded into it. So again, quite different. Uh, on the north coast, vertical banding in the nice pegmatite veins intruded as well. Uh, some lovely beaches, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> um, and there are one or two places where the gneiss has actually started to melt as well. So the, the sort of the felsic parts of the gneiss have melted. Um, and the fluids have come up into, into some of the other areas of the gneiss. So, so this light part of the gneiss here uh, has been molten. It hasn't got a foliation to it. And this is it on, on, on other scales too, some large areas of mafic gneiss, uh, but quite some quite felsic granitic type material intruding round about it as well. 
So the, the Louisiana is hugely variable and it's formed over a, a, an enormous time range as well. So we're talking, um, you know, about a third of the life of the Earth, basically, uh, 1,600 million years, something, something like that. Moving on to the Torridonian, uh, we're looking here uh, from um, Loch Inver eastwards. This is Cunyag, the mountain I just showed you a, a model of just now. Torridonian in the distance, horizontally bedded Torridonian, and in the foreground, the Lusian Nice. Quite knolly, um, and this is pretty much the landscape that was buried by Torridonian. Torridonian formed about um, a thousand million years ago, a billion years ago, something like that. Um, and the Torridonian is now being stripped off the top of it. Uh, this is Loch Assent in the foreground. Louisian in the lower part of this hill we're looking at, horizontally bedded Torridonian, and then the Cambrian rocks dipping off, and this is eastwards to the left as we're looking at, and they're sloping down the hillside, stepping down onto progressively older and older layers of the Torridonian. This is the unconformity a bit closer up. Uh, Louisian down at the bottom here, and this person's feet are pretty much standing on the old land surface of the Louisian. And you can see the ho almost horizontally bedded Torridonian um, round about where the person with the blue helmet is. A bit more of the unconformity here. This is the Louisian uh, down here where my cursor is. And the actual contact, the unconformity runs pretty much along that line that you're looking at. It's kind of an old scree soap, basically, that we're looking at there. This is a clach toll over on the west coast. A bit more Torridonian, showing some dip on the Torridonian. Um, and these gullies here are, in uh, are eroded out along fault planes, uh, fairly steep normal faults, um, which uh, the rivers have been able to cut into preferentially erode. Stack Poly, also Torridonian. This is the Torridonian a bit closer up. Uh, you can see a bit of the current bedding, the cross bedding in the Torridonian. So the bedding, as you're looking at it here, the main bedding is about horizontal. And we can see the cross beds, uh, which have been deposited uh, in a river system, basically, by moving sort of small, small moving sandbanks. There are mud cracks in it as well. Um, you can see these here. Uh, the, the darker material is the mud. Um, which is cracked up, dried out, um, and then sand has dropped down into the cracks and has sort of preserved that, that honeycomb system. Um, there are cyanobacteria um, in these mats as well, in these muds as well. Um, so these little filaments you can see here are um, remains, sort of limey remains of the cyanobacteria. within the Torridonian is this um, meteorite, meteorite impact ejector. Um, it's called the Stack Fadder, um, and these, are, these little green fragments in it here are devitrified glass. There's little bits of Torridonian mudstone. There's all sorts of things in it. So basically, it's an ejector that was thrown out during a meteorite impact. There's big boulders in it of, of Louisian that have been carried along in this ejector, this sort of ground hugging flow of material um, during the impact. Yeah, it's to do when people are being coming up on the screen to be admitted. It's, it's just frozen again while somebody's waiting to be admitted. I don't know quite why, but. I'll see if I can disable the waiting room so that people okay. just come straight in and hopefully that'll stop it happening. Very sorry about this, everybody. Try again. Um, and there are great rafts of, of Torridonian sandstone caught up in the ejector. Um, you can see these sloping off in different directions here. Um, there's a, an isolated chunk there in the ejector and, and these sort of um, great slabs of rafts of sandstone. Um, 
if the if the with this impact ejector, then where was the crater? A few places have been suggested. One out here near Laird. Um, but po possibly out in the Minch as well. That seems to be a possibility. Uh, coming into the Cambrian now then, uh, this is Canis, um, Torridonian down at the bottom of the mountain here, and the basal quartz sites, the pipe rock and so on, just sloping off uh, on the side of Canis. This is the unconformity between the Cambrian quartz sites and the underlying Torridonian. See the Torridonian bedding almost horizontal, um, and the dipping basal quartzite running across to where this person is sitting just down at the bottom right there. So that's the unconformity between the Torridonian and the Cambrian. Uh, this is a map of, of um, Culmore. You can see the Louisian uh, up at the top of the map here with the scoury dikes in it. The, the sort of browns and oranges of the Torridonian. And here's the basal quartzite dipping sort of down to the bottom right hand corner and there's a couple of little outliers of Cambrian quartzite forming the two tops of the mountain there um, and erosion in here this little valley in here is eroded through the base of quartzite and just left those little outliers sitting up on the top of the mountain. This is what it looks like um, uh, the base of quartzite you can see the main bedding not far off horizontal and you can see it again sort of some cross bedding in it it's a Effectively, a, a beach bed deposit or just off the beach. Pipe rock, so uh, burrows uh, through the pipe rock, lots of different styles. So there's obviously more than one organism burrowing. Uh, the lighter stripes there, you can see all the burrows into a slightly redder part of the basal quartzite. Tops of the burrows looking quite circular. They're kind of cylindrical, so they go down into the, uh, into the sediment. Some of them, are, uh, this is looking at the top of some others, sort of pipe, uh, sort of trumpet shaped and zoned. You can see a bit of sort of concentric zoning in those. Uh, some, some modern day ripples, just to, to sort of compare with the modern day environment. We've got ripples here, we'll have cross bedding in it. You can see the burrowing uh, organisms coming up through it. Trilobites alive at the time. And uh, some saltarella, these little sort of cone shapes that you can see, hollow cone shapes, these are, are saltarella. And something that we it's just been discovered in the geopark recently in the basal quartzite are these sort of star shapes that you can see here, a fossil called Spachanopsis, um, uh, which, which you think would be linked, would, would be related to an echinoid, but as far as I'm aware, they're not. OK, what does the landscape look like in the Cambrian here? We've got the uh, the Durness limestones down here. We're just coming on to talk about those just now. You can see how green the grass is. Um, way in the back here, you can see the basal quartzite. Uh, these are the mountains. These are Munro's in the background, Conival and Ben Morassant up here and Braybag. And these have all been thrust over the top of the limestones. So they're they're uh, chronologically older than the limestones, but physically higher than them because they've been thrust over it. Uh, Smoo Cave um, in the Dernish limestone up on the north coast. Uh, the Dernish limestones are burrowed as well. These are burrow systems. Uh, you can see them sort of branching in one or two places there in the limestones. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, algal, lots of algal remains as well. Um, this, this is referred to as, a, as an egg box structure, so that's why the egg's in there. <laughs> so stromatolites, basically. The moine rocks, what do they look like? Well, the moine rocks are sandstones, mudstones, um, folded in places as well, quite tightly folded. Garnets in, so they've grown during the metamorphism. So the Moyne rocks then have been thrust over the top of uh, the, the Cambrian rocks. Uh, there's been lots of thrust faulting, lots of folding. You can probably see down in the foreground here, if I just run the cursor around it, um, some sort of over folds just down here, quite large scale folding uh, in the thrust zone itself. That's a bit of a, 
a close up of it. See the, the bedding in the Dernesh limestone coming here, then dipping vertically down towards the house, gable end, and then turning and going up over there. So, uh, so quite a lot of folding, thrusting as well. Uh, this is a uh, the overhang is along a thrust fault, one of the minor thrusts, not the Moyne thrust itself, but one of the, the minor underlying thrusts. This is the Moyne thrust, and um, this is in Loch Broom. These are the Moyne schists up at the top here, um, and the Moyne thrust runs where my cursor is going down across the screen there. And the Moyne schists here are being thrust up and over um, other rocks caught up in the, in the thrust zone. This is in Loch Glen Cool, and here are Moyne, uh, sorry, are Louisian Nices thrust up over the Cambrian quartz sites. So it's a thrust fault running down this hillside just here. Stack of Glencool. Uh, this is the Lemoyne schist here, thrust over some Louisian, um, and the Moyne thrust itself runs at that level there, just where my cursor is running just now. Um, Basal quartzite's being thrust. There's a thrust fault running pretty much down this gully here. If you trace the bedding in the Cambrian quartzite, you can see them turning and going steeply over the top there. So it's a sort of nap structure. And you'll probably be aware of some of the experiments demonstrating how the structures in the Moyne thrust zone were formed. Some intrusions. Uh, so this is cyanite up at the up the top here. This is the limestone turned into marble. So quite large areas of marble in the in the geopark. It's quarried. So these are some blocks that have been cut in the in the marble, including a bit of a cyanite intrusion there into the into the limestone as well into what's now a marble. And then finally glaciated. So we've we've got. Um, various moraines, we've got glacial striations. This is in Torridonian. We've got erratic blocks. <laughs> this is a, a big Louisian erratic block sitting on top of Torridonian. We've got these sort of big whaleback structures. This is looking into Loch Broom, uh, and these are the summer isles uh, that you're seeing down in the foreground here. And you can see the long, gentle slopes up on this side and the plucked backs to them, uh, all that sort of shape to them as the ice traveled from left to right as you're looking at them. Um, and there are big grooves cut across the landscape as well, uh, being referred to as mega grooves. Um, and you can see it in this image here, see these lines coming across more or less horizontally on the image itself. Looking down, this is Loch Broom uh, running down in the left-hand corner. Uh, Ullapool is just on that uh, flat area just down there. So these are mega grooves actually cut into the Moyne schists. This is an image of the sea floor in Loch Broom. Uh, the colors represent the different depths of water. So the blues are the deep water and the reds are the shallow water, um, and there are mega grooves cut into the seabed. And you might just be able to pick out some of the terminal moraines here in red, um, which were formed as the ice retreated from uh, top left to bottom right as we're looking at it. There's about 15 or 16 um, terminal moraines cut across the landscape as well. Sorry, not cut across the landscape, deposited across the landscape. There's some raised beaches in the area. There's, there's one here that you can see, uh, and a lower one down at that level, mostly formed by glacial outwash um, coming into the lochs when the sea level was a bit higher. That's looking back up Loch Broom with Ullapool in the foreground. Ullapool itself is built on one of these raised beaches or glacial outwash um, fans, if you want to call them that. Peat, it's a lot of peat on the landscape. Um, and people are becoming more interested in the peat now um, when they're realizing 
uh, how much of a carbon sink it is. Um, the crofters are still allowed to cut peat, uh, but very few do um, to burn it. Okay, what does the geopark try and do with some of this wonderful geology and, and the la wonderful landscape that we've got? So we, we've got a number of ways that we try and display the geology uh, to the visitors that we have. Um, those visitors can be um, um, university groups, uh, can be uh, geologists, they can be people with virtually uh, no geological knowledge at all. Uh, this is Knock and Crag, so this is a trail set out at Knock and Crag. Um, we've put up um, information points. Um, there are what's called a rock route. There are 14 landscape interpretation boards as you drive around the geopark. And these wooden constructions that we've put up in some of the laybys are referred to as geopods, and they've got interpretation panels on as well. And these are a little bit more detailed than the, the rock route interpretation. We work with a range of partners. So this is working with the local ranger service. Um, there are uh, three or four rangers within the geopark area. They're employed by um, High Life Highland, which is a, an offshoot of Highland Council. We have a center, um, it's called the Rock Stop. It's up on Loch Glen Cool. Uh, you can see it in the background there. It's an old uh, two classroom uh, primary school. We've got a free exhibition in there. Uh, we've got a cafe in there. We've got a shop in there. Um, so we, we have a footfall there of about 13,000 a year in a, in a normal year anyway. Not that there have been very many normal years in recent times. Uh, we've got interpretation boards within the exhibition inside telling you about geoparks in general and about our geopark in particular. We've got lots of the old um, Victorian, or well, facsimiles of the Victorian geological maps from Peach and Horn's time uh, in there as well uh, for you to look at. We work with a number of, of um, film companies um, and TV companies and so on to try and get the storylines out there into the general public and to get people to think about, to try and get the general public in to think about the landscape and, and basically how their planet works, I think. We bring um, groups of people in. Uh, so I run um, week-long geotours. Um, weather's always like that, of course. Well, it certainly is if I look out the window this week anyway. So, <laughs> um, so some bespoke tours um, and some general public can sign up for, um, which moves around the whole of the geopark area and takes you right through looking at, at some of the storylines, uh, a whole range of different rock types and structures during that week. Well, perhaps maybe it's not always sunny, I don't know. <laughs> I think this was a U3A group, uh, so this was a, a bespoke one. Um, and um, uh, just a sunset to finish with. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the geopark just before we, we take questions. And I'm, I'm sorry uh, about the slides not working properly there. I have no idea what, what the problem was, but I hope it's not detracted too much from your, your enjoyment of, of what the area has to show. But basically the geopark um, was initially set up by a sort of a, a combination of uh, the BGS, Highland Council, Visit Scotland. Um, they, when budgetary concerns came along, they all sort of moved away from that. Um, so now it's run as a, a charitable company by local people, basically. So there, there are directors. Uh, there are seven from the community councils in the geopark area and some elected directors. And as I say, it's a, it's a charitable company. Um, so it runs in that way. Um, it's at the moment it's got a number of employees. Um, I work very much part time, mostly as a volunteer, but we have a full time manager, uh, a full time um, geoscientist as an engagement um, uh, officer and education officer. We have an administrator. We have two people working at the rock stop just now. Um, so we, we have quite a range of, of people employed. So it is a, a significant employer as well into the area. Um, and one of the things we're trying to do is to support the economy a little bit um, and, and look to help with some sustainable 
economic development as well. Um, the big project we've got just now is, is called ACT, and I, I'll let you go onto our website if you want to find out much more about that. But basically, it's funded um, as a heritage lottery funded project, and it's developing some trails and some information uh, and working with local schools as well. So there's quite a range of projects within that um, that you can find about, out about, but I won't go too deeply into that just now. So I think I'll, I'll probably finish talking just there um, and let you um, ask questions from that point. Um, and I will try and come out of sharing. <laughs>